Hello everybody, welcome back to the monthly Q&A. So every month on my Instagram, I ask for questions on a little questions box for you guys to ask me anything you want. This time I said trading and non-trading related questions and to make them interesting because a lot of the times it's just the same old, what was your strategy? What's your biggest loss? What's your biggest win? How do I become profitable? All that sort of stuff, which you know I've answered so many times in previous videos and on um, comment sections on my Instagram DMs. So I'm kind of gonna pick ones which I don't usually speak about or ones I don't usually get asked a lot. Um, obviously there are ones in here which people have mentioned a lot, but we'll see what happens with this, with this Q&A. So if you actually want to be the part of the next Q&A, then be sure to follow my Instagram and then you can ask me a question in the next one and hopefully I can answer your question next month for the September Q&A. You guys sent in a lot of questions. So if I show you this, you can see that we literally had so many questions. Like, there's a lot. So obviously I can't answer all of them. So I'm just gonna pick certain ones I've actually got on the list. Um, so hopefully your question gets answered. So without further ado, let's get into this. Question one, and I'm actually filming this on a Sunday. So usually on a Sunday, I'd film my weekly breakdown of the trades I've taken in the previous week. And so this question is, why did you stop posting the weekly breakdown videos? And the main reason for this was I wasn't, like the past few months, I haven't been taking many trades. So last year when I was actually posting these weekly breakdowns, you know, every week without fail, I was taking like three, four, five trades a week. And obviously that was giving enough content for like 10, 15 minute video, me going through five trades, people were loving it. But now I'm only entering like one or two trades per week. And the reason for this is because I have a higher capital now. So the account, the accounts that I actually have, you know, the funded accounts, my personal account, this is you know, in the seven figures. So basically when you actually have a higher, you know, account balance, you don't really want to be risking to one, two, three, four, five percent a week, because I'm happy to make you know five percent in a month, ten percent in a month, because that is you know fifty, hundred grand um, on the low end. So obviously, the more trades you enter, the more risk you have, um, obviously out there, and that you're exposed to. So I just don't really think it make enough content for these weekly breakdown videos. I could do like a monthly breakdown. Uh, obviously, I do the monthly Q and As, but I could do a monthly video where I talk through you know this is my best trade of the month. This there's all this. Um, but yeah, that's the main reason why I haven't actually been keeping up with the weekly breakdowns um, over the past few months or so. Next question is, do you think Forex is the way out of the rat race? And I'm assuming you're talking about you know, the nine to five job to your 67, I think it is now, isn't it? Um, then retire. Can Forex get you out of this? Yes, obviously. I'm not saying it's the only way because any business can get you out of the rat race. Forex is just one, you know, business in particular and business is hard anyway. So if you start a business, if you start Forex trading and expect to get out of the, the so-called rat race, you know, quickly, it's not going to happen. You obviously still have to work to fund your trading account. If you're losing, you still have to work to pay your bills, your expenses. But Forex is definitely a way out of the, the so-called rat race, um, which people like to label it. But a lot of people actually get into trading to kind of quit the nine to five. They end up quitting their job too early don't have the money, don't have the capital, and then just end up going back to their job. Then they will call trading a scam or they don't personally think that trading is, you know, a legitimate way to make money. So then they'll give up and just start back over again, maybe trying another uh, side hustle. Maybe it's drop shipping, affiliates, FBA, all these different kind of like, you could say side hustles, but business ideas that get like the, the scammy posting on like Instagram and YouTube and all that sort of stuff. And if you get into trading just to make money, you probably won't make a lot of money. Simple as. If you're just chasing the money, you won't make it. If you just go into trading, I want a Lamborghini, I want to get rich. You're not really going to do that. I mean, obviously it's possible. You know, obviously I want to get rich, um, but that's not to get a Lamborghini and all that sort of stuff. Not really sure what I'm trying to say here, but you kind of get what I'm trying to say. My backtesting results say 10R is more profitable, but 5R is psychologically much easier. Guess you're asking which one to use, I guess. Uh, well, obviously 10R is more profitable because you're making double the profit on each, uh, each trade. 
but obviously psychologically 5R is better. If you're holding for 10R, you know, you could be 8R in profit, so price going up, 8% in profit, and it drops down to like 3%, 2%. Are you, is your mindset strong enough to actually still hold that trade to then hit the final TP of 10R? Most people wouldn't be able to handle that. Most people wouldn't even let the trade, let's say it just went straight to target. Most people would probably close out before the 10R. And that's why he's saying that 5R is, you know, much easier psychologically. And I agree with this. Um, I personally started lowering my risk to rewards. I did some data collecting, you know, from forward testing because back testing is only valid up to, you know, a certain point. It's kind of good to test the strategy. But if you don't recognize it in real time, you can't actually take the trades. Because like you say, back testing 10 hours more profitable. Anyone could mark up a one to 10 and you know over 100 trades they could probably be profitable because obviously you're making so much profit on those winners that's fine but in real life in real trading would you actually be able to hold to that would you be able to enter and find that get the right stop loss adjust for spread all this when it's actually happening would you be able to deal with the drawdown the amount of profit you're seeing on the screen the majority of people they wouldn't actually be able to handle this so that's why if you're testing it live forward testing or even trading on a, a small live account then it's going to definitely help um but i would say kind of tricky because i don't know if he's asking 5r or 10r which one to use um, obviously that does depend on your strategy your psychology your account size everything um so i guess just test it out and see what works for you your view on footprint and volume profile trading and you know i did look into that previously not really something i'm using i've never really used it you know in my live trading there's some back testing and all that I haven't really found it it's really beneficial to me personally obviously I know traders which use it very very well and they make a lot of money from it maybe in the future look into it again but where I'm at now in my trading I just don't really feel like there's much need to change anything like drastic um, because we're doing quite well how do you acquire long-term profitability and I'd say the main reason why people aren't profitable long term is they don't focus on the long term i know it sounds simple where they just say focus on the long term what i mean by this is people just try to get rich quick they'll see someone online that's making 30 40 percent in a month and then they'll try and you know emulate the results you cannot make 40 percent a month every month for 10 years 20 years probably even a year it's just not possible if you do this on a let's say a 400k ftmo you compound into your own personal account you'll be like a billionaire in a year, making like 40% a month, something like that. So so if you see these people online that are saying they're making like 40, 50% a month and they're not a billionaire or a multi, multi-millionaire, then they're obviously lying to you. So the way I've actually developed my trading now, you know, I used to be like that. I used to think, oh, if I don't make 25% in a month or 20% in a month, I'm a bad trader. But that's because I was trading small account sizes. At the start, you're obviously going to think, okay, on my £1,000 account, 20% is only £200. I can't live off £200. So you try and make more profit, more profit, you risk more. And obviously, you end up losing more as a, as a result of this. But when I started realizing that on a 400 grand FTMO account or any funded account, I just say FTMO because it's the biggest, a 400k account, if you make 2.1%, Every single month for a year, you're making over six figures a year. Obviously, this is pre-tax and everything like that. But six figures a year making 2.1% a month. You don't have to make 20% a month. You can make 2% a month, make six figures in a year. But then people online will say, you have to make 20%, you have to make 30% a month to be a good trader. Look at this, I'm making 100 hour on a trade. You're obviously not. You're obviously not making 100% on the trade. That's just absolutely stupid. And if you believe that, Sorry to say it, but you are stupid also. And there's also a question about SMC going on to this topic. Why do you hate SMC? And, you know, I don't actually hate SMC. It's kind of more the SMC community, if you can even call it that. It's more like a cult. Um, but if you go on Instagram, you know, because I follow a few Forex accounts and all that, I get ads for Forex traders and Forex pages. And then when I see... 1 to 540, 1 to 480, this sort of stuff, I'm like, do people actually believe this? Do people actually think you can catch these sort of trades? And the funny thing is, you only see their winners. You never see a live track record, live entries, MT4 entries, never show their losses. It's funny that they never show their losses, but they'll show 
a 100 for one to 480 you know it's, i'm even get my words messed up because the number is actually that big um and if you believe that and then you actually go and try the strategy and then you think okay this is why 90 percent of traders aren't profitable because they believe the unrealistic things they see on instagram i just i'd rather catch a one to three a one to five absolutely lovely rather than risking what's it like they have like half a pip stop loss for like a 400 pip tp really obviously smc it works for some people i know people that trade smc you know there's different variations of it um but yeah if it works for you then go ahead and use it but i personally wouldn't want to be inside that sort of cult community in which smc is actually um kind of developing now and you know anytime you talk about smc you get a mob of hate comments because i did a video about smc like my thoughts on smc trading oh my god people absolutely hate it when you i wouldn't say like disrespect but just talk about smc if you're not praising it or saying it's possible they're like oh it is possible i know someone that caught a 1 to 200 you know, if they're making a 1 to 200 why aren't they on the ftmo leaderboards at the top a lot of these smc traders that trade ftmo accounts surely if they're making a 1 to 200 1 to 300 1 to 400 they'd be on the top of the ftmo leaderboards now once have i seen one of these traders on the top of the ftmo leaderboards it's quite funny really but you know no hate towards smc uh, i don't hate it obviously it works for some people go ahead support and resistance work ichimoku cloud works macd works all this sort of rubbish not rubbish but you know what i'm trying to say if it works for you go ahead use it simple as no hate towards any strategy if it works for you perfect any funded account giveaways and i've only actually given away one funded account ever and that was actually in my mentorship so what i did was i got everyone to post their trades you know before and after for like i think it was like a week or two week period so i could see how people are doing because i've obviously seen everyone in the group from when they've joined the charts they've been posting i can see who's improved the most and I actually gave away a 100k funded account to one of the members in the group so that's quite good so if you are looking to do another funded account giveaway you possibly win one and learn from me at the same time so you're guaranteed to pass the ftmo um join the mentorship link in the description can you talk about your mindset when starting a funded challenge on a loss and this question comes from when i actually used to do the funded challenges and post them on youtube I was kind of frequently losing the first trade or the first two trades on the funded challenge so i get the challenge i get the login details and i first trade i always lose and then after that i just go straight into profit and pass the challenge but the first trade was definitely psychology i'd want to pass straight away so i find a setup you know within like an hour or two of actually getting the details and i want to pass straight away because in the past i'd actually passed within an hour before videos doing quite well on the channel go check it out i passed the ftmo challenge within an hour and i've had a lot of experiences where i've just breezed past the challenges and then obviously you get overconfident you think you're unstoppable you can't lose a trade obviously this isn't the case um, and you're gonna get humbled real quick and that's why i think i lost the first trade i was just trying to win straight away and pass the challenge straight away i uh, just trying to find a setup even if it didn't fit the plan i'd just take it like oh i could pass real quick if i just enter here if i miss this i might not pass the challenge and i think that's kind of the main reason why that actually happened um but now when i take them i just wait for a perfect perfect setup because if you actually buy the challenges now it doesn't actually start until you actually take the first trade so i wait don't start the challenge or maybe i'll take the 0 0.01 trades to build up the trading days and then i'll execute if it's not a 1 to 10 i'm not taking it because i want the chance to pass in that one trade that's just me personally and then if i have that 1 to 10 i'll scale in and i might have done a video on it previously um but that's how i actually pass the challenges relatively easy even after having that one or two losses at the start of the challenge have you ever lost a funded account if so just one or multiple and i actually lost a i can't remember what company it was I'm not going to name companies because i don't really want to give them promotion if i'm not getting anything out of it to be honest um obviously i just talk about ftmo because they are the biggest and everyone knows ftmo um but there was this different company which has a set drawdown rule and because i have my trades trade copier running so it has all my accounts on it 
I kind of forgot that this company had a different set drawdown rule. And I was in a trade. I think I was up like 7 or 8%. Then price came down to 3% in profit. And this apparently counts as the equity drawdown of 5%. So then the account was uh, blown. Or I got an email saying I violated the, the rules. Quite confused because I looked on my accounts. The FTMO was still fine. The other companies were still fine. And this is just this one company was was blown apparently. Um, and then, yeah, I lost the account. It was only a 100k account. Not really the end of the world. But it's quite annoying because all the other accounts I had were fine and in profit. Uh, the trade was running in profit. But because of their weird equity drawdown rule, um, the account did actually get violated. And I unfortunately lost that account. But, you know, it happens. Not really the end of the world. At least I know to not use that company in the future on a copier. You know, they're fine to use normally if you can manage the trades. But because I run on a copier, um, it's a bit more difficult to do that sort of that sort of thing. How much are your Rolexes? And I'm actually wearing one of them right now. So this one here was £11,500. And then my other one was like 12000 something. Um, I didn't actually buy them retail because it's very, very hard to buy them at retail. Which is unfortunate. But we've got the little submarine here. Looking to get Patek, which was another question. If I can find it. What's going to be your next watch? Ideally, it would be either a Day Date or a Daytona. You know, the nice Rolexes. However, if the businesses do well, by March, I'm hoping to get March, maybe into summer next year. Rolex prices and watch prices are probably going to drop even further. So quite low at the moment compared to the peak, you know, a few months ago. I think I can probably, yeah, if I don't get them retail by then, get a nice Patek 5711. That's probably the one I'd go for. And you've got the 5980. Mm. I kind of like the plain 5711. I'll post a few photos on the screen so you guys can actually see that. But that's kind of the one I actually like. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can get one of those watches. You know, if the funded accounts pay out quite nicely, might even be able to get one earlier. But I do anticipate watch prices actually dropping a bit further. So hopefully we can, you know, get them at a decent price. So then we don't have to pay 100k over retail um, for a stainless steel Patek. Best financial advice you have received. And I guess it's not really financial advice, but it technically is. And that was to actually get an accountant and a financial advisor. And at the time I was just running it through, you know, sole trader, all my businesses. And it was kind of just as me. And then I got an accountant and we sorted everything out. Financial advisor told me invest in this, pension, ISO, all that rubbish. But it saved me so much money. You know, on tax, VAT, obviously got paid all that now. But overall in the long run, and you know, even this year I've saved like tens and tens of thousands on tax just from having it set up as companies instead of doing it as a sole trader. But obviously it depends on your situation, depends on how much money you're making where your money's coming from, um, if this advice actually, yeah. What do you use all your four screens for? And if you guys don't know, I've actually got one, two, three, four, 27 inch curved monitors here at the setup. And to be honest, I thought I'd actually use all the screens at, you know, at once, but that isn't the case. And so I'll go through each screen and what I actually use it for when I'm using all four, you know, optimally. The bottom right screen, is actually where I usually have my trading view. So the trading view is usually open on that screen if I'm trading. If I'm not trading, I'll have either Twitter or Notion open, um, which is where I do all my business stuff and where I've got like a shared thing in there um, with people I work with. Bottom left screen is actually where I usually have YouTube or I have the, my web browsing. So let's say I'm looking at something online, it'll be on that bottom left screen. So right now OBS is open there because I am actually recording my audio. On the right, I have the Notion because it's got my, my notes for the Q&A. Um, however, I don't want to be looking to the side a lot, so I've actually got them up on my phone as well. Um, all the questions written down. Top left screen, this is either used for File Explorer. So let's say I'm having to transfer files and everything. That'll be open up there. Um, but I also open Spotify up there. So if I'm listening to music, Spotify will be up there. Just, yeah, because I don't want it 
having to click off of something to actually bring up Spotify. So I have it on up on that top left screen. Um, top right screen is what I actually use for my Meta Trader 4. I use MT4 on the PC because it is so much cleaner. You can close trades with one click instead of having to swipe, close, like the three clicks, and you get the, oh, you can, it's just painful on a phone to close trades. So I close them on the PC, one click close, absolutely beautiful. And also you can see exactly how much you're gonna win or lose if you hover over your stop loss and take profit. So you kind of see, okay, this is how much I'm gonna win. Obviously you no know percentage choice anyway, um, but that is quite handy. But I still, I would say I could still use two screens, you know, even sometimes I use just my MacBook. If I'm not in this sort of room, um, I'll use my MacBook and I can get everything done as well. Obviously you have to click between windows and everything, um, but it's not really the end of the world. Do you speak any other languages than English? Eu falo puco português, e eu hablo espanhol, e je parle petit français. Guten Morgen, ich bin ein Mann. Uh, but yeah, I can speak a few different languages, obviously not fluent in all of them. The one I probably know the most of is probably French or Portuguese. Um, obviously French did it at school, GCSE and all that. So I can speak a little bit of French and I have actually learnt uh, a little bit of Portuguese recently so I can speak, speak like that. Para mi hizo e muito bom. Translate that guys. Um, and let me know if my Portuguese people, if that is any good. But I do think it's very, very cool if you can speak another language or, you know, you're from a different country. I just think it is. I just really want to be fluent in another language. So that's why I'm trying. You know, I'm on Skillshare learning Portuguese and French. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we can maybe start a Portuguese channel, a French channel. And I can take over different countries Forex, Forex industry. That'd be quite cool. How do you deal with FOMO? I saw you missing massive trades by a matter of pips. And, you know, within the past few months, I've had a lot of times where gold will come within like a pip or so of my entry. And the thing is, it happens. And I post it on my Instagram stories sometimes when it misses just because, you know, it's painful. I want people to share the, um, share the pain with me and emphasize for me. But dealing with FOMO or fear of missing out the best way to deal with it is pretty much just following your plan. If you've got a plan, a set trading plan, set rules before you enter a trade, managing a trade, j closing a trade, what do you do after a trade? If you have this all laid out in front of you when you're actually trading, it's pretty much just a copy and paste system. You want your trading to be, if I see this, I enter. If I see this, I don't enter. Or if I don't see this, I don't enter the trade. But I know if price didn't do that certain thing, if price didn't come to my entry, the trade wasn't valid for me in the first place. Obviously, if it's missing by like 0.1 pips, then that is very, very painful. But I'll never enter just after, let's say it's dropped away from my entry. Oh no, I've missed the entry, it's five pips away. I'm not just gonna get in the trade just for the sake of it. My entry was there for a reason. My stop loss was there for a reason. If price didn't tap me in, it just didn't tap me in. It's not really the end of the world. Technically, if you don't get tapped in a trade, you didn't miss profit. That trade could have lost. If you then FOMO'd in five pips extra, your risk to reward's a lot less. When I do my trading, it's usually five, 10 pips stop losses anyway. So then you've lost half your risk to reward or even, obviously it could be even be more. Um, but I just think of it as, if the trade fits the plan, I'll enter. If it doesn't fit the plan, I won't enter. Simple as that. <laughs> Question here. How are you so good? And firstly, thank you very much. But I think the way I'm good at trading is because I was obsessed. Every single day, every single thing I thought about, everything, every single thing I did online, social media, was just trading. Even now, everything I do is business-wise. My businesses and trading every single day you know, people are going to call you insane people are going to be like oh why don't you do this why don't you go out and do that are they going to be able to next year go on a yacht private jet all that sort of stuff most likely not so if they're not already where you are why are you listening to those people you should never take business advice or money advice from someone that doesn't have money or successful businesses why would you take advice from them would you take advice from someone Let's say you're a footballer. Would you take advice from Ronaldo, who's where you'd want to be, or some guy that isn't even a footballer? 
you're going to take the advice from Ronaldo. So why, if you've got poor people, let's just say that, poor people around you, why are you taking money advice or advice on how to get rich from someone who isn't rich? They don't know how to get rich. If they knew that, they would be rich. The way I actually got good at trading was I got advice from people who were where I wanted to be at. They were, they were at the level where I wanted to be. So I got advice from people on the level that I wanted to be at. If I want to be a really good trader, I'm going to take advice from really good traders. I'm not going to take advice from some random guy that doesn't even trade properly. You see what I'm trying to say? And coming on to the last question now. Last question of the Q&A. Did your parents get upset by you not going to college or university? And short answer, no. A lot of parents, I get emails, not emails. I get a lot of DMs. People messaging me, you know, young kids, well not kids, like teenagers, kind of the age when I started trading. They were like, oh, my parents are making me get a job. They're making me go to uni. I just want to trade. And I was in a, you know, unique situation where I went to college five months, five months, six months, something like that from September to February. And at this time, I was actually starting my first live trading account. And I actually made 1500 within a week of trading during a school holiday or like a holiday off. I think it was like, it's like a half term maybe in February, something like that. But during this half term, we had a week off college and I made 1500 trading on my phone. Then I was like, you know what? At the college I was at, the, the certain job you could get from that qualification, you probably make 25, 30 grand a year. But I'd always wanted to be rich. And since a young age, I'd always wanted to have money. I was obsessed with starting businesses drop shipping i tried to do all of this youtube from since i was probably like 10 10 11 i was starting youtube and all that sort of stuff um online obviously my parents my mum saw this and i was like okay i want to drop out i, I want to make loads of money this is how i'm going to make loads of money and then she's like okay you can drop out so i was like okay and then i dropped out the next week didn't get upset let me do it because if you have parents that believe in you you can pretty much do whatever you want obviously don't just drop out and then not do anything drop out and actually put the work in show them that it's the right choice for them letting you drop out and then pay them back later um with the money so if you guys did enjoy be sure to follow my instagram for the next next monthly q a and i'll catch you guys next time